the majority of the shows have been sold out, so obviously it's been doing really well um, in terms of attendance. But also, um, I had a chance to personally talk to a lot of the people who have told me how my music has affected their life. People that were once involved in drug abuse, drug addiction, selling drugs, that said, you know, now I'm trying to get my life together, I'm going to college. People that were incarcerated and heard my music while they were in the system, and they were like, you know, I heard a song of yours in prison. Or just people that were oblivious to how the world was and they were just in college like, you know, yeah, I was just gonna go and get a job and do whatever, and now I'm looking for a career and I'm looking to do what I wanna do without you know, compromising as much of myself. So it's definitely been a blessing to meet people. And, and then I've hard, had to hear some of the harder stories, you know, like the people that will say, hey, I tried to kill myself and then I heard your music or people that said, you know, after Dance with the Devil, they'd be like, you know, I, I was a victim of that, you know, and I wish you would have been in my life when I was 12 years old. So I, it's very tough to hear that, but I think it's a healing process for them. So, I mean, all I can do is tell them that, you know, they shouldn't just look at themselves as a victim, but also as a survivor, you know, because a lot of the times when that happens to people, they don't survive that. They, they end up either killing themselves or they're the victim of a murder as well. So I'm like, I'm definitely taking it all in little by little, and I don't take any of it for granted at all. I think that they're, they both fulfill me in different ways, you know, like... One of them obviously strokes the ego, you know. With, with music, you definitely do get that immediate reaction from the fans and supporters when you put out music. They're like, oh, man, this is amazing work. Whereas the charitable stuff happens at a much slower pace, you know what I mean? But I think that, in a sense, is the long-term fulfillment. And not to say that my music doesn't have a long-term fulfillment, but that's something that I get immediate props for. You know, I'll get off stage and they'll be like, oh, hey, you know, whereas, you know, I could literally close a deal tomorrow to set up, you know, an orphanage in a school again. No one's going to know about it, you know what I mean, unless I put out a huge press release or something like that. But, you know, until we're ready to pull the trigger on that, that's not how we do. You know, you have to get your ducks in a row, make sure that, you know, all the, the particulars of an endeavor like that are taken care of before it's officially announced, which is a little bit different than music. Music is supposed to be put out there and spread virally in the, with a campaign. So I think, you know, that's just the difference. I definitely do have a very, very diverse sound in production. You know, we got Ali Shaheed Muhammad. We got Ninth Wonder. I mean, Scram Jones, DJ Premier, DJ Green Lantern, uh, my brother Southpaw. So, I mean, it's a very, very diverse sound, and there are some big names on them. I can't release it yet because I have to get the clearances, but it's definitely going to be some very, very violent, but also not gratuitous violence, very point-driven, you know, exposing the mythology of America. You know, I think that that's something that people don't venture into looking into enough. You know, for example, um, I had some friends of mine that were from Eastern Europe, and sometimes they would come here and they would say, you know, a, a, a little bit of, of ridiculous stuff that I, I knew was culturally wrong. And I was just like, you know, let me explain something to you that you may not understand. Uh, not, I wouldn't say they were, they were talking like a white supremacist, but they definitely did say ignorant things. And I, I would explain to them, I would be like, you know, for years in Eastern Europe, you people had the Russians foot on your neck the russian interpretation of communism not necessarily communism itself i remind them is more imperialism built on the back of that for russia and for years and years they couldn't explain even though they advertised that russian communism was superior to uh, american western quote-unquote free market they couldn't explain why people kept trying to run away from them you know, if you're so superior, how come everyone's trying to get the fuck out of Eastern Germany to come here? And I said, well, now let's, let's review a little bit of the mythology of America. When the settlers, settlers and colonists first came here, um, there had been a gigantic plague that wiped out, you know, 90% of the indigenous population because of the early Spanish and Dutch settlers that brought um, diseases that were purposefully given to people. So 
what you have is a huge subsection of indigenous population that moves westward. Now, all of these Scottish, Irish, uh, English, Spanish, French uh, people who would move to these tiny little colonies, the Dutch or whoever it may be, Germans who were living here, uh, they defected in mass from some of these colonies. So much so, my friend, that the punishment for leaving the colony in some cases was corporal or capital punishment because they wanted to deter people from leaving. You know why? They were going to live with Native American people that weren't Puritans, that weren't psychotically religious, that weren't trying to wake you up in the middle of the night and tell you it's time for you to pray to our version of Jesus. You know, you claim that you came here to escape, escape religious persecution, and yet here's the difference. You claim that indigenous people are the savages when in reality, you know, the complete opposite is true. How can you tell me that this, superior, th this civilization is superior to that when the people are defecting in mass to try to get the fuck away from you? Why? Because the indigenous people don't think oral sex is a sin. They don't think that, you know, you have to be from a certain family name to have respect and, and, and to have yourself treated like a decent human being. What they'll say is, hey, you, the guy in the red with the fucking Boston hat. Are you gonna wake up at 5 a.m. to chop wood with us? If we get attacked, are you gonna fight with us to protect our home and protect our families? You know what I mean? Are you gonna cook to make food for everybody here? Great, then you know what? You can be accepted as one of us eventually and there's some upward mobility. Whereas in this, oh, do you have a certain family name from across the pond? You know, how much money did you bring over here? You know, what do you have to give us? You know, what can you sell yourself? Because most white people that came here were poor as shit and they were indentured servants. How long are you going to sell yourself into slavery? Whereas here is, 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 a, is an action-based, what you pay into it type of system that exists among indigenous people. I'm not saying it was perfect, but it was definitely more humane than what we would find in this kind of schizophrenic European society where they claimed, you know what? We came here looking for religious freedom and for democracy. If you're a capitalist society, why are you ashamed of coming here looking for capitalism? You came here looking for slaves. You came here looking for gold. You came here looking for land to steal. But that's not part of the narrative. That's not part of the mythology. And if I can do anything to bring that up and to bring that to light and to force people to confront that, not as an American or a, a citizen of anywhere else, but just as a human being, you know, fuck race, fuck religion. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about confronting it as a human being so that we can get to a place where we don't have to say that first before we introduce ourselves as a human being. We can just say, hey, man, how you doing? Not, hey, he's so-and-so, so I assume this about him. It's ridiculous. Do you know what we actually did? Me and uh, a few other people, this was years ago, we formed the game, the grass... Uh, grassroots artist movement and literally what it was was we linked with a few uh, local doctors in the Bronx and we were doing like shows and, and, and having them you know then come and we gave a percentage of the money of the shows to them if they would give free health care to the artists and people and mind you they're not specialists but they were like regular checkups and they were just you know general practitioner doctors now, obviously, this wasn't so that we could, you know, present this to the entire country and tell them to sign up to our healthcare system. It was very basic, but it was done to make a really important point that if a whole bunch of people who, if someone turned on the channel and seen us all talking together, that they got oh, some niggas from the hood, yeah, who set up a healthcare system for themselves. Like, this was made more just to shame the government and be like, look, dude, if we can do this for ourselves, What's to stop you or what's really stopping you from actually doing that so they can benefit everybody and their family here in this country rather than just benefit, you know, the top percentile of people that can afford health care coverage? And then what happens to the people that doesn't, that, uh, that can't? We don't really talk about that. You know, we don't talk about how many people die of preventative disease in this country, which is ridiculous. How many people have to buy organs on a black market? You know, it, it, and not only that, but also it, it plays into big pharma as well. You know, how many people are just prescribed pills when in reality what a doctor should say is, hey, you need to change your diet. Fuck a pill, dude. How about you don't eat hamburgers anymore, like forever? And you can only eat, you know, salad and you're going to have to change to this and, you know, you're going to have to cut coffee out of your diet. 
hey, now the choice is yours. Now you can't blame anybody else. Now if you fucking die, you have to be told and explained that eating a gigantic steak is like putting a gun to your head and playing Russian roulette because you have horrible heart disease, you know, and you need to exercise more. I think that's another thing about this country because the pharmaceutical industry is so powerful. They want everything in the world to be a fucking pill that you have to buy from them for 20 bucks a pill, you know, which is why they don't like marijuana, which is probably less destructive for you than Zoloft or any of these other mood altering drugs. You know, if I'm depressed, I'd rather get high and chill and laugh at my friends and, you know, then fucking take a pill that's a, a goddamn depressant and makes me, you know, want to hang myself when I'm alone. It just doesn't make any sense. That's where we're all in this country. That, you know, government hurts people. That, you know, religion has hurt spirituality. You know what I mean? That instead of the military protecting people, it's being used to protect corporations that don't give a shit about people. You know, it's interesting. I say it all the time, man. You know, when I had a... When I had an album a couple of years ago, and I said in some of the music that the government was spying on you, you know, a, a lot of cynical fucks and people out there were like, oh, well, you know, that's just a conspiracy. He's a controversial rapper. Let me explain something to you. I'm not a controversial rapper. The fact that I made songs or a couple of songs about how the government was spying on you, that's not controversial. The fact that they were doing it the entire time to anybody that was simply asking questions and trying to make their country better, that's controversial. I'm not controversial because I made a song about how the Iraq war was a sham. Uh, the fact that it actually happened and that 1.6 million people died, you know, who had nothing to do with 9-11, by the way, which was kind of the almost catchphrase that was used. It was constantly put into it with language. Oh. Iraq, 9-11, 9-11, 9-11. It was just like word association that they were playing. And I just think that, you know, people were just so terrified at that particular time because of what had happened that, you know, they were as much a victim of the shock and awe as, uh, as the people in Iraq. In terms of the information, obviously not the human cost. But I think that that is something that we haven't even got to. We haven't even got to the human cost of what the war on terror is really. You know, and I think that Mr. Snowden um, is right. If someone is going to be out there and they're going to whistleblow and talk about how the people of Iraq have been, you know, pretty much slaughtered uh, unabashedly. You know, you have contractors and mercenaries from Blackwater shooting people randomly in the street. We saw a video of that. I mean, this isn't a lie. This isn't a conspiracy. This is true. You know, and now they've been hired by Monsanto. I mean, at what point does it end? At what point do the American people just say, enough is enough. We're not going to allow ourselves to just be continuously lied to by people with an agenda. And that's what they have to confront. That's what they have to look at when people come to them with this quote unquote information. Oh, this is good for you. Oh, you know, uh, us canceling and not having free health care for everyone, that's kind of good for you. How? How is it good for you to not have the same health care as the Congress and their children? How is that even possible? But they're convinced so through propaganda. And unless we confront that, we're going to keep continuing and repeating history. And, you know, I just want to say rest in peace not only to the, all the people who died on 9-11, uh, but the people who died as a result of 9-11, those, you know, tens of thousands, about 100,000 people from Afghanistan, the millions in Iraq, and God knows how many other people around the world. You know, I saw the president cry when the Boston bombing happened. Or rather, I'm sorry, not when the Boston bombing, when the, the, the Sandy shooting happened in Connecticut. And that is something to shed tears about, children being slaughtered. But my question at the time was, Mr. President, how many tears have you shed for the children of Afghanistan, for the children of Pakistan, for the children of Yemen. You know, how many tears have you shed for them, dude? Because they've been dying on your orders. They've been dying on, on your drone strike orders, you know? And, and people continue to ha not have the balls to criticize this president. Why? Because he came in with a progressive agenda and then flipped the script? No, he deserves to be called out just like any other fraud politician. You know, why'd you sign the Monsanto Act? You talk about you care about kids. 
Yeah, you just prevented their parents from knowing whether the food that they eat is GMO or it's organic. You took that away from them because they should be able to go to a supermarket and say, hey, no, 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 I don't want this. This has, you know, stuff that could potentially cause cancer in my child or some other disease. And this is completely organic and it's a little more expensive. I'll take that. And then it brings up the, the age-old question, well, damn, now you're making this about class too because I can't afford this one right here. I can only afford the GMO one. Maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe they don't want to show that only people who can't afford it will be the ones that are blessed with health, and the people that can't are the ones that are going to get fucked over. Hey, yo, this is Immortal Technique. Right now you're watching anyhiphop.com. New York City all day, even though we're in Boston. Yankees and Giants all day, even though we're in Boston. I love y'all motherfuckers, though. I appreciate it because Boston was one of those places that had a real strong underground scene in the early 2000s when I came out, and I'm looking forward to see it keep building and stay independent. Um, shout to everybody out here from Boston doing it. I love you. Peace.